Hello and welcome to Crazy Food History, where we explore the world of food and drink. Did you know that the first Hooters restaurant opened its doors in Clearwater, Florida in 1983 and was initially intended to be a place to eat wings and oysters after a day at the beach? Today, we explore the incredible journey of how Hooters became a cultural phenomenon. From being the hottest spot in town to a forgotten chain. So, attention and get ready to be surprised by the captivating story of one of America's most iconic restaurants, Hooters Restaurant. Are you interested in the origin story of the world-famous Hooters Restaurant? To tell the truth, it began with a group of six business people who, on April Fool's Day in 1983, had an outrageous concept that would revolutionize the food sector and transform it forever. Lynn D. Stewart, Gil D. Giantonio, Ed Drosty, Billy Ranieri, Ken Wimmer, and Dennis Johnson made a leap of faith without any prior expertise and without a defined plan, and the rest is history. In spite of the fact that the odds were stacked against them, the savvy business people refused to take a chance and instead concentrated on building a fun and pleasant environment, which resulted in Hooters becoming an instant hit. Do you want to learn more about the history of this superpower in the fast food industry? Well, stay with us and be ready to have your side split with laughter as we share some facts that are both amusing and fascinating. The very first Hooters restaurant ever opened its doors in the middle of Clearwater, Florida on the site of a rundown nightclub that had been there for many years. Don't be fooled by the site's rundown appearance. It was this location that established the model for the franchises that came after it. But how did they manage to pull it off? By making fun of their predecessors in the funniest way that is physically possible. The first Hooters restaurant had a fake cemetery, complete with the corpses of prior unsuccessful occupants. What a horrible way to add insult to injury. But that's not the end of it. When Hooters was first conceived, its founders had a very particular vision in mind. They wanted to establish a restaurant that offered manly finger food in a setting that was reminiscent of the 1950s. And boy, did they come through for us. Customers were given the impression that they had gone back in time because the restaurant was decorated with polished wood planks and played music from the 1950s and 60s on a continuous loop. However, if we're being completely honest, the food was the one that stole the show. The menu at Hooters was a treat for the senses, offering everything from the restaurant's namesake chicken wings to mouthwatering oysters. It is reasonable to conclude that the founders were successful in accomplishing their purpose. Hooters has emerged as a cultural phenomenon in a short amount of time, with outlets springing up all over the United States and even further afield. And despite the fact that it has been in existence for a considerable amount of time, the Hooters brand continues to occupy a unique position in the affections of many. This iconic eatery has been serving up American fast food classics since the early 80s, and they're not slowing down anytime soon. From crispy fried chicken to succulent clams, juicy shrimp to tangy key lime pie, Hooters is something for everyone. But let's be real, it's the hot wings that steal the show. Cooked to perfection using top secret recipes, these wings are a must try for any self-respecting foodie. Now, let's talk about co-founder Ed Drosty. This guy was so committed to promoting Hooters that he would don a giant chicken costume and hit the streets, accosting unsuspecting passersby with the promise of wings. Talk about dedication. And it's not just the founders who are willing to go the extra mile. Hooters has become famous for its all-female staff, who are not only gorgeous, but also known for their exceptional customer service. But what really sets Hooters apart from the competition? It's the unique atmosphere and overall experience. With its wood-paneled walls, retro music, and friendly staff, Hooters has always been a place where people can come together to enjoy great food, drinks, and company. And let's not forget about the infamous Hooters girls. These ladies are the heart and soul of the restaurant, bringing a touch of fun and flirtation to every table. It all started with the hiring of Lynn Austin, a former bikini model and telephone operator in the summer of 1983. With her stunning looks and charismatic personality, Austin quickly became the face of the business, sporting the now iconic uniform of bright orange jogging shorts and a tight white tank top. Her image was plastered on a giant poster that towered over the original Hooters restaurant, setting the tone for the company's marketing strategy for years to come. But let's be real. Hooters' use of female employees' bodies as a marketing tool is anything but ordinary. 
From the outset, the company has been unabashed about their unique selling point. In fact, the restaurant's official website openly declares that the most important element in the Hooters experience is the beautiful and vivacious Hooters girls. And while some may argue that this approach objectifies women, the Hooters girls themselves seem to be on board with the concept. In the U.S., they are required to sign an acknowledgement stating that they understand that the Hooters concept is based on female sex appeal. Love it or hate it, there's no denying that Hooters' unique marketing strategy has been wildly successful. As the 1980s progressed, Hooters experienced increasing levels of success. The company was brought to the attention of the general public by an advertisement that aired during the Super Bowl and featured a person dressed as Austin holding a pitcher of beer. The crowd consisted primarily of guys, which is quite surprising given that the atmosphere was definitely sexual. In 1985, Hooters released their first ever girls calendar in an effort to capitalize on their one-of-a-kind selling pitch. The calendar featured provocative images of a number of Hooters staff, including Austin, among others. The restaurant reached out to Playboy, in addition, with the goal of gaining additional publicity for the establishment. Playboy struck a contract that allowed several of the Hooters girls to appear in the magazine's centerfold. The partnership was fruitful, and as a result, Hooters' reputation as a venue where one may see attractive ladies was enhanced. Despite the criticism, the Hooters model had become popular. Its primary appeal was sexual, and this aspect, barely masked by the facade of humor, drew investors from all over the world. Throughout the 90s and into the 2000s, Hooters struck a number of lucrative advertising partnerships. This included a deal to provide entertainment for the United States military and a sponsorship of the NASCAR racing series. As a result of the brand's popularity, many imitators opened up, some of which are still going strong today, including Twin Peaks, Spice Rack, and Tilted Kilt. Despite the naysayers, the Hooters model has effectively spawned a new eating subculture. There have been bumps on the road on the way to opening over 400 restaurants in over 30 countries. Three of the company's original founders perished in a plane disaster in 1995. The tragic loss made the company stop and think about its future. During Hooters' zenith in the early 2000s, the company's arrogance overrode its better judgment. Various business decisions, such as the Hooters airline that didn't last, were made by executives who should have known better. Throughout the flight, Hooters girls served drinks and food to the Hooters Air passengers. How the Hooters chain got its start remains a contentious topic. Many have complained that the company presents adult content in a kid-friendly environment. The company boasts that their products are suitable for consumers of all ages. Yet according to company policy, female workers are expected to accept that the work environment is one in which joking and innuendo based on female sex appeal is commonplace. In light of this, it's tough to see how old justifications can survive. Some people may think a company is not empowering if it requires women to act like compliant mannequins to keep their jobs. The ladies who work there are not to blame. The culture that allows this to persist is. Hooters has never been a place for lighthearted fun as seen by the discrimination its employees have endured. But the story of Hooters is far from over. This chain is still going strong with new locations popping up all the time. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and let us know what other food related topics you would like us to cover.